No. And we are recording. Okay. So we're doing leadership class number seven, scripture memory. Uh, before we move on, a question for you is, uh, oh, here comes Doug. Let's get him on in. And is he in? You in, Doug? Yes, he is. Okay. So um, we're just on number one, so don't worry. You're not, you didn't miss anything. We talked about some other stuff. Uh, why do people not memorize scripture? What are the excuses people use to not memorize scripture? They just say they can't do it. It's just too hard. They can't remember this or that. They, that they, basically, it boils down to they don't want to invest the time to do it. Because you can, you can memorize your phone number. You can memorize scripture. To say that it takes too long. Yeah. So like, it, it takes like forty-five to an hour to memorize the verse, but then like, you can still do it. Yeah. Um, I've had other people say that. Uh, so bad memories one. Uh, the not enough time. Uh, it's commendable but not required in scripture. And others have said um, that there's plenty of other Christians in the past who have not memorized, so it's not really that important. And so, but I would say that is not true. In fact, we're going to go ahead and look at number one real quick. I clicked on the wrong thing. Number one, memorize and meditating. Memorizing and meditating on Scripture is one of the most powerful disciplines that there is. It's one of the most powerful disciplines. Just a moment, guys. I'm going to pour some water. Okay. Um, here's what I have come to learn of how people live and react to things. Let me see if I'm going to pull this on over. Wrong one. Where's the other one at? I'll move my book here. It's hidden. There he goes. Okay, this does not look pretty, but let me explain this to you. When we are dealing with things that we want to, uh, that we're willing to work on, um, if it is important and it is urgent, then we'll do it. So when we say scripture and learning it, that's important and it's urgent, then I'm going to take the time to invest in doing that. However, if I say it's important, and it's not urgent, that's supposed to be you, and it's not urgent, well, I'll start doing it, but I won't follow through because I won't really create a plan, a long-term plan to finish and follow through in it. Or I may say it's not important and it's urgent, and I'll start doing it. It'll be something that I will do a couple of times. Maybe I'll practice a couple of times, but then I, I won't. I'll get distracted. Other things are more important. Well, then you have not important and not urgent. And that's, uh, you know, that's that idea that uh, I'm just, I'm not going to do it. And so, therefore, we don't do anything. So, the question always comes down to is, is memorizing scripture important and urgent? It needs to be both of those things in order for us to want to memorize scripture. So, let's go ahead and look at a couple of verses to talk about this. We're going to be looking at Psalm 119 verses 15 through 16. I will meditate on thy precepts. And what are precepts again? Scripture verses. Yep. And regard your ways. I shall delight in your statues. I shall not forget your word. Um, oops, wrong way. Oh, what have I done? Okay. Okay. Verse 48, I shall lift up your hands to your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statues. So I love your word, your commandments, and therefore I'm going to memorize it and meditate on it day and night. Uh, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Uh, but his delight is in the law of the, of the Lord, and his law is... He meditated on a day and night. So you guys all know this verse. This is one of those verses that we memorized earlier. And it goes on to say, And he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in, what, and in whatever he does, he prospers. Um, next verse. Joshua 1.8. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute your guys' microphones real quick, uh, just so that it doesn't override my microphone. Okay. Uh, you guys can unmute yourself at any time. Just click on screen and unmute yourself. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. So going down to... Uh, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. So if you want to have success, it's that same idea that we talked about last week. Memorizing scripture is what draws and gives you success in life. It's what gives you those blessings. Uh, this is true with memorizing scripture. It's kind of tied together. In fact, number two says, Memorizing the Bible is probably the hardest of all the disciplines and least practiced by adults. Christians. So I'm going to ask a question in just a second. And when I ask it, you'll have to unmute yourself. Just tap on your phone and click the unmute button. Why is there like a space after Christian? Are you supposed to write an S? Uh, yeah, you can put an S there. Okay. So uh, the question is this: Why, um, why do children, why do we have children memorize scripture, but adults typically won't? Well, it's definitely easier for them. It's definitely easier to learn anything as you're a kid. Yes. So there's the ease. And what's made it easier for them to do it? Well, I don't know. They're they in we, 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 So they, the more you practice, the more easier it becomes. So if, okay, they're yeah. taught, if they're taught to practice something, they're going to keep on learning it easier and easier. So like when I did Awanas, I memorized scripture a lot. And I memorized like a verse within like 20 minutes. But now it takes me like 40 minutes. But yeah, because I haven't done it as often as past back then. I think, I, I think kids thrive on affirmation too and mm -hmm. so when they when they memorize and you tell them that they really did a good job they really get into that adults uh not so much yeah yeah i think uh doug i'm gonna go ahead and mute your mic real quick just so you know um Unless you want to say something, sorry if I um, if I muted you wrongly. But uh, I, I there is some truth to that. There's uh, there's that affirmation. Uh, there's that uh, adults are asking a child to memorize something, and so they want to be praised. Um, there's also the ease because kids have been doing it; they're learning all the time. Uh, you know, for most of us, once we finish up high school uh, and then college, we're kind of done learning. We just don't grow as much after that. And we don't, we don't, our mind is not used to doing it. And there is some truth to even that the brain is able to take in and absorb information in your earlier years. Um, and uh, it's just able to absorb, but it's not impossible. And, and it's, something that should be practiced by adults. In fact, what we should be doing is doing it as a child and then keep on doing it as we grow older. So it shouldn't be an excuse not to do it. It just means it's going to take some work. But uh, we're men, and we should be expected to step up to the challenge and, and work. Okay, number three, memorizing Bible verses and using them to replace wrong thinking is the most powerful way to control your thoughts. When you're going to bed at night and it's the middle of the night and you are trying to go to sleep because you know you got to get up in three hours, does it benefit you any to sit there and go, okay, go to sleep. You got to get up in three hours. Hurry up, go to sleep.
No. <laughs> no. Mason's shaking his head. No. No. I've tried that. What do you typically do when you try to do that? Like you just wanna go to sleep and like go to sleep. Doesn't work. So what? then like all you have to do is like not think about anything. I guess, and that's I don't know. I well, don't know I don't know. I don't it, know how you fall asleep. Like I was gonna say, it seems like when you uh, are trying to get rid of whatever some thoughts or some bad thoughts in your mind, the more you think about them, the more it just encourages it to be there. Yeah, you dwell on it. Yeah, I think the more you sit there, you just you spiral into it. And you think about it. so the only way to replace uh, wrong thoughts is to um, and. Is to, I'm sorry, the only way to control those thoughts is to replace them with other thoughts. And so that's what we're doing with Scripture. In fact, uh, Jeremiah 17.10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind even to give to each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. It's, in fact, I'm going to say on that one real quick. Um, you know, the, the God knows what's going on in our mind. Our self-talk that we have, where we we think it to ourselves, and what we're, and you know, we verbalize to ourselves what we're thinking. Uh, God knows those those thoughts, so we need to replace the ones that are sinful; those that are leading us away towards um, towards ones that are benefiting or beneficial in His thoughts. All right, let me uh, let me click on something real quick here. Okay. Why is it not going? There we go. Revelation 2. I will kill her children with pestilence, and all the churches will know that I am he who searches the minds. Here's the part. Searches the minds and hearts, and will give to each one of you according to your deeds. Again, it's God knowing what's in our hearts and what's in our mind. Hebrews 4, 12 says, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow. So God's word is alive. Um, and it goes on to say, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the hearts. So God's word judges our thoughts and our intentions. And, you know, we'll talk about it later on. And the spirit convicts us. Uh, Jeremiah 14, 4, wash your feet from evil, O Jerusalem, that you may be saved. How long will your wicked thoughts lodge within you? Matthew 15, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts. These are the things which defile the, ma the man. So it's not, a, it's not the outward, what we touch that defiles us, but what's coming from our thoughts. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. In fact, let me back up to that. So oftentimes in Scripture, uh, you'll find that people will say, oh, the food you eat, that's what defiles you. Well, no. Jesus says it's not the food you eat. It's what's in your heart. It's what's in your mind. It's it's the touching the tomb, to the dead, the tombs of the dead. That's what defiles you. Well, uh, it defiles us so that they can't go up and go to the temple and do sacrifices. But it's, what's really defiling them is what's uh, coming out of their hearts and stuff. And so... Uh, while the the Pharisees and Sadducees were the religious leaders who looked good, Jesus re refers to them as whitewashed tombs. They're pretty on the inside, on the outside, but dead on the inside. Second Corinthians ten five. We are destroying speculation and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God in obedience. Or we're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That's like one of my favorite verses. So we're taking all of our inner thoughts and we're making them obedient to Christ. James 1.13, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. It's your own thoughts that are tempting you. James goes on to say, but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Oh, I forgot about that. Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is accomp accomplished, it brings forth death. Number four says, meditate, meditating on and meditating on memorized Bible verses is the most effective way to conquer sinful habits.
So one thing that uh, that David was able to do, David was able to write so many Psalms in the Old Testament. Um, what gave him the ability to write so many Psalms? His love well, for God. He was, his passion for God. Okay. okay. His passion. He thought, and love. he thought about God 24 7. Yep. Yep. He did. Was uh, somebody else, was Mark saying something to you? Or. I thought somebody else was saying something. No, so that he, was just me. I was agreeing with Brent. Okay. Um, so. I would also say he would sit there. Scripture talks about how he would sit there and he would meditate on God's law. So if he was meditating on God's law, he loved God. So therefore he memorized scripture. So therefore he was able to meditate and think about God's law. And God also gave him, you know, the other element is God uh, gave him the ability to do this. He, the creative ability to actually uh, make these Psalms. So those things combined is what led him to to write so many psalms. Um, but it's this idea of loving God and meditating on it. If, you, if you're loving God and you're meditating on his word and meditating on scripture, then it begins to have an influence on our sinful habits. So if there's a sinful habit that we're struggling with, then we should memorize scripture that talks about that sinful habit. So as we're, as we're thinking about it all day long, um, it's something that we are... Uh, it's just something that goes through our minds and, and so that we are less likely to sin. It's not that we won't sin, but we are, we'll are we sin less. Uh, many years ago, there was a, a program called Net Nanny, which prevented you from going to like pornography websites or typing in the word sex or anything like that. And, um, and so I don't remember what verse it was, but I remember um, – I was trying to find out different things out there that would be good to put on my computer and stuff, just to make sure that the temptation was not there. And uh, for the net nanny, it had to have a password. And I don't remember what verse I put down anymore, but I put down this really long verse. Like if I was going to override net nanny, I had to write out this really long verse of scripture. And uh, that made it very less appealing, you know, to, to try to override it. Now, sometimes I did need to override for like school and stuff because Net Nanny was not very smart and often blocked me from good websites. But um, but I had to write, if I was going to override it, like if it was really worth it, I really need to get to that website, I had to write a long set of scripture because I wanted to have an effect on, on me and on my mind. Uh, Psalm 119. By the way, that program I don't think exists anymore. That's like a program from like 20 years ago. Uh, your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. Establish my footsteps in your words and do not let any of my iniquity have dominion over me. So let me have uh, focus on your words. Um, for number four, did you actually say what they were? Did I skip it? No, you got it. Yeah, oh, I missed it. Okay, I'll give you a chance to write it down. <laughs> conquer, uh, effective way to conquer tough sin habits. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, he is who's he who is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who is too quick is quick tempered, exalts folly. Again, if you have God's word in your heart and you're, and you're thinking about it, you have the right mindset, then you're not going to be quick to make dumb choices because you have God's word leading you. Uh, Proverbs 13 says, a quick-tempered man acts foolishly. I love that one. Uh, Proverbs 29, 22, an angry man stirs up strife, and a hot-tempered man abounds in transgression. Because God's not reciting in their minds. This, he's, they're not meditating on God's word. Uh, do not be eager in your heart to be angry, for anger resides in the bosoms of fools. Uh, Proverbs 16. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than, than he who captures a city. So, I mean, that right there says a lot. Those who are uh, willing to, to conquer their mind and, and meditate on God's word, they have better. those who have control of themselves are more mighty than... Uh, a, a major soldier who just lets his anger and everything else control him. 
Number five, Bible verses that we memorize well are the most powerful weapons we have to resist the devil. I won't spend a long time here. Uh, when Jesus was uh, being tempted in the desert and the devil was trying to tempt him, uh, what was his response? He quoted uh, scripture. In fact, he mainly quoted from the book of Deuteronomy. In fact, that was the only book he quoted, not mainly. That was a book he quoted from, Deuteronomy. James 4, 7 says, Submit therefore to God, Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But it's submitting to God, submitting to his word, submitting to who he is. So when we are attacked, we're letting God equip us. Be, so, be of sober spirit. Be on alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, but resist him firm in the faith. Then Luke 3 through 4 says, And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. So here is the devil tempting him, and Jesus uh, replies from the book of Deuteronomy. And Jesus answered him, uh, Deuteronomy 8 3. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. So the question is, is how strong are you in God's word? You know, that's what every Christian needs to ask himself. How strong am I in God's word without having to use Google? You know, am I meditating and am I memorizing it? Uh, and it's hard. And I recognize it's hard. It's what we talked about earlier. It's hard, but it's like going to the gym. You got to keep doing it. If you go to the gym four days and then say, this is hurting me. Every muscle hurts and you quit. Are you going to get stronger? No. No. Mm -mm. Nope. Got to keep doing it. Got to press right. on. And the same is true with Scripture. The more we do it, the easier it gets because we'll get stronger, like going to the gym. We'll get stronger. It'll, be, it'll become easier and easier. So maybe like I think I felt like our first uh, four or five weeks, we kind of had this groove going and it was getting easier for all of us. Like we're memorizing Scripture. We're taking these tests. We're moving. And then we had this month where – we just slowly dropped back down and kind of lost all that momentum. And now we're right back at the beginning again, trying to pick up that speed. So, yeah, we, we had a little wave and we had a dip, and now we're, we're rebuilding again. So uh, don't be surprised if it takes a little bit to, to rebuild up that muscle again, that memorization muscle. Uh, number six says, memorizing Bible verses faithfully has a powerful impact on our mind. And then I'm going to go on here in just a second. So mind. The second part is the did I skip a part? No. The mind, like any other muscle, grows when we exercise it. Our memory, our ability to concentrate, and our ability to think systematically improves dramatically. So here's a question for you. Let's think about those who, who put their mind to use and, and try to follow through. Like um, if you were to sit down, how many great men uh, stopped before reaching their goals? None of them. That's right. None of them. And how many of those men that could have been great who stopped trying to reach their goal do we remember? None of them. None of them either. So, if we want to be, uh, have an influence, an impact, then we need to follow through with our goals even when it's hard. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Tyler Perry. He's been on uh, TBN quite a bit. He's, he's a pretty good man of faith. And one of the things that I thought was pretty interesting, somebody said, well, tell me one of your greatest failures. And he said, I've never failed in my life. And they're like, what do you mean? He says, because every time I failed, it was a learning process. Therefore, I learned that as a lesson, a life, life lesson. But, you know, then you talk to like Michael Jordan. And he says, without failure, there is no success. 
the whole point here is that you just got to keep trying and pressing on to to accomplish that goal that we're all looking for and yep i think all of the men that are on this thing right now just want to get closer to god and not not fall away from him during this time i think this is where you find your real commitment of who's all in right here too mm -hmm. the ones that are willing yeah. to get out of their comfort zone and and do this thing so my hats are off to all you guys are who joined in <laughs> amen <laughs> yep uh psalm 119 that was good by the way brent i don't want you know I'm moving on because of the time um oh how i love your law it is my med it is my meditation all the day your commandments uh, make me wiser than my enemies for they are ever mine it goes on to say i have more insight than all my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the age because I have observed your precepts. I have observed your, again, precepts, another word for? Scripture. Scripture. That's right. So I memorized your scripture. Um, and it's made me wiser than those who are older than me. I mean, that says a lot right there. Even though you're older, it doesn't make you the wisest. Number seven says, memorize Bible verses is what the Holy Spirit will use to convict you of sin to guide us into the perfect will of God. And I'll move on to the next scene in just a second. Are we good? I got one more here. Just a second. No problem. Okay. And then. Uh, then be real. Okay. Go okay. for it. I'm ready. And the uh, second slow. part is. No, it's okay. To guide us into the perfect will of God and to motivate us to great accomplishment. Holy Spirit is what convicts us of our sin leads us to change and when we change for god not just change for the sake of changing then we accomplish more because we accomplish what has eternal value i'm gonna move on to hebrews 412. Okay, hang hang oh, on there. I, I got I got off. I'm sorry. Can you go back there real quick? There yep. Okay. Motivate. Motivate. I was trying to figure out where I filled in the wrong blank. Sorry. Yeah, I, I accidentally did that too. And then I'm like, oh, I see. Motivate and a great accomplishment. Okay. Go ahead. I got you guys. Hebrews 412. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. So his word is alive and piercing as far as the vision of soul and spirit of both joint and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So the word of God is able to judge our heart. It is alive. It allows the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin. And when we know his word, then we know we're sinning against God. It's a lot harder to come up with excuses of why we're going to keep doing that. Ephesians 6, 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So having the word of God, we need to equip ourselves with that every day. This is part of the armor of God. Put on the full armor of God, you know, the belt of truth. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Belt of truth, the uh, breastplate of righteousness, uh, the word of God. We need to be in prayer. We need to be uh, reading his word and we need to be memorizing it so that we can meditate on his word. Psalm 119, 23 through 24. Even though princes sit and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statues. Your testimonies, testimonies also are my delight. They are my counselor. Your word is what counsels me. Your spirit is who guides me. So who read scripture and memorized it? Jesus memorized scripture. The very one who wrote uh, and helped our Old Testament prophets and, and like Moses and all those people write scripture 
had to learn as a child to memorize it himself. It's very, uh, he very much thought scripture was important. He never came to abolish it. He came to fulfill it. It said, it comes from God. This is good. And so that's why he would say things like in Matthew 4, 4. Uh, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So scripture has value. It's coming out of the mouth of God. Uh Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to, te to the test. Number nine is memorizing God's word greatly honors God and demonstrates our love for him. If you uh, did not know your children's names or their birth dates as they were growing up, how valuable do you think your kids would feel? They would not yeah. appreciate that. They would be like, oh, thanks. You did it. Remember my birthday. Yeah, that's a good job there, Johnny. Nice answer. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Pablo. <laughs> I'm going to move on to the next slide there. Deuteronomy 6 5. So when we have God's word in our in our on our heart and our minds, it lets God know that we love him. We are taking the time to invest in knowing his word. So, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. You want to have a display, a, a way which you can show God that you love him, memorize his word. It's a actual way that we can physically show that we love him. And these words which I, can, I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. And you shall therefore impress these words of mine on your heart and on your soul. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as front tails on your forehead. But, set for Samuel 2, but now the Lord declares those who honor me will honor uh, those who honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me, I will lightly be lightly esteemed. So those who honor me by memorizing my word, I will win honor you in return. Number 10, memorizing and meditating on God's word gives us great wisdom. If you want wisdom, memorize the book of Proverbs. You will have some of the greatest wisdom uh, that you, um, you probably one of the greatest and wisest people uh, known here on earth there's a lot of ideas if I were to go through Facebook and look up people's ideas and see what people have to say about things uh, people have lots of different ideas about what they believe is right what knowing God's word and having it memorized we're able to filter out those ideas and see which one is the right response because there's lots of responses but what is the right response well it's those that line up with God's word Psalm 119. If I move too fast, let me know. Uh, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever mine. I have more insight than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. That's what we read earlier, and he goes on to say, I, have, I understand more than the age because I have observed your precepts. Number 11, memorizing and meditating on God's word blesses us with success in our endeavors. Want to be successful? Want to be blessed? Read God's word and memorize it. Memorizing God's work, word is work. And God blesses and honors that work. And an, actor, yep. uh, an actor who has had great success is Anthony Hopkins. And that's because he puts a lot of effort into memorizing his, his uh, lines. He will memorize the entirety of a script 
he'll go over 200 times to make sure that he has it memorized so that when he acts, uh, he knows everything that's going on. He knows everybody's lines. He knows everything that's happening. And therefore, he's had great success in the acting world. Well, the same can be translated to Scripture. Uh, you're memorizing God's Word, and God is going to bless you because he sees how much you care and love him. Psalm hey, 1. Yes. I was going to say, that makes me think, though, that, um, yeah, God's going to... God will bless us for memorizing his scripture. That makes him very, very happy. But um, in in order for that to translate to others, it's got to be put into action because I, I think we've all known lots of people that can quote scripture, but you don't see the love in their heart and you don't see any action as a result of that. And yes. that can be yeah. a complete, com that can be a complete turnoff to uh, people that are not believers. Yes. Yeah, you get, it's the yeah, application so of the word. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I, I believe you guys are, are right. And um, and it's a good point to bring up that it requires the heart needs to be involved as well. Uh, not just the, so the Pharisees probably knew know more scripture than I know. And yet loved people and God less then I'm going to say myself, I'm going to put myself above them because um, they didn't love Jesus. They didn't love people. They didn't love God, but they loved that they knew scripture. And so that's the, yeah. it's the, the point that you're making sounds like that. You know, it's not just the love of knowing the scripture and being prideful, but it's loving God that you, you're memorizing scripture, but then you're also applying it towards people. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 Instead of just being a sayer, you got to be a doer of it. You got to apply it in your life and follow out the word and not just yeah. be a sayer of it. But yeah, you're right on track, Gary. You got it. Yeah. The, the, the Pharise Pharisees had it in their mind, but not their heart. You can, exactly. you know, scripture has to, scripture has to end up both places. Yep. 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 Uh, this is a verse you guys memorized earlier. We've gone over this one already. Uh, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates a day and night, and he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. Uh, number 12, memorizing and meditating on God's word increases our prayer power. It's that cycle of... Uh, when I am memorizing God's word, it means I'm reading God's word, and um, and then that influences my prayer. And because that influences my prayer, I have a desire to, to pray more and, and love God more. And then so I pray more, so then I get more of his blessings. And because I'm getting those blessings, you know, I'm reading more of God's word and I'm memorizing it. And now I'm memorizing it. I'm also praying more and, and I'm getting uh, loving God more. And I keep getting more of those blessings. And it's that cycle that keeps going around. Uh, a positive cycle. John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. You have me in your in your heart and in your mind, and I'm going to be. Uh, you're going to be on my heart. You're going to be on my mind. Number 13, memorizing and meditating on God's word causes our faith to grow. Just one point on that last thing that you said, or that was posted up there. It yeah. has to be in alignment with God if it's to come to pass. Yeah. You know, I, I used to think, oh, now I'm a follower of Christ. So I'm going to get everything I want. Now, it has to be in his alignment and what he wants for us. You know, <laughs> just kind of a yeah. important thing for, for a new believer, you know, to yes. know that. So they're not disappointed when they say, oh, I want this brand new 300 ZX, you know, and then God gives them a Volkswagen. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So you got to it's got to be in alignment with what he wants for us. So we won't destroy ourselves. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, Romans 10, 17. So faith comes from, from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Matthew 17, 20. 
And he said to them, Because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, and shall say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it shall move, and nothing shall be impossible to you. It's that faith and uh, trusting in God and knowing his word. Number 14, the self-control that is gained from faithfully and systematically memorizing the Bible. will benefit us, benefit us in many ways as we battle the devil and our flesh and the world. Three things that oppose us. The devil, our own flesh, and the world. But memorizing the scripture will help us to battle that and control ourselves. When I was studying the um, thing for this week, the quiz thing, was, me and my mom were studying together and I'm like, this... It's all about war. Basically, every single thing has something to do with war in it. So, like, battle. Yes. So, so unfortunately, uh, up until just about a couple hundred years ago, I've been doing more research on this and learning. Uh, the Bible has always been very masculine. When you think about the disciples who followed Jesus, all very masculine men. Uh, but within about the last 200 years, we've seen a large feminization of the church, and it's becoming much more feminine, much more uh, hand-sewn dollies or doolies. I don't know what, I, what those are called, but uh, girly look, flowers. Uh, but that's not how the way the Bible's been understood. It's, historically, it's been very masculine, and men have been very much attracted to to it. So we like we like to fight. We like to conquer things. I just don't like fighting with my children, but I like to fight too. So, First uh, John chapter two, last verse we have here. I have you, fathers, because you know him who has been who has been from know him who has been from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you will overcome the evil one. There you go, masculine. You will overcome when you have God's word on your mind. Now, uh, one of the things I use, if you want to go check it out, I use BibleMemory.com. It's an app that I have downloaded to my phone and uh, helps me to memorize scripture. However, if you want to continue using the cards um, like this, and uh, those will work just as well. Whatever works for you, I like to have it on my phone because that's, that's just me. Uh, because I can have it with me wherever I go. But you're not limited to that. Uh, if you're looking for that and you're like, oh, I would like to go ahead and use that app, you can find it uh, right here. Uh, Bible Memory app. It's on the discipleship page where you guys get the link. You'll see the Bible Memory app page right there. and It'll take you to the website in which you can download it. In fact, if I remember correctly, this will even work on a computer. You don't have to have it on a cell phone. You can uh, make this work on a computer as well. So You also have to um, turn on the, your settings on your phone that you to allow Google that you can download stuff off of that. No, there's a, there's a um, on here, let me bring it back. On here, you can uh, have them text you a link um, to download it. In fact, right there, you just click on that. Okay. And then you don't, have to, yeah. you don't even have to change the settings. So, Or if you're an Apple user, you can use this one. So, All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the presentation, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do next. So just a moment here. Stop. And I'm going to stop recording.